What's up everyone? I'm Marilee Blair and I'm a serious travel addict as I've been to 54 countries so far. And today I'm going to talk to you about the gorgeous and magical blue and teal green lakes of Banff National Park in Alberta, Canada. Banff National Park is known for its awe-inspiring natural beauty. The park consists of soaring mountain peaks, pristine alpine lakes, sprawling glaciers, dense forests, and picturesque meadows. Its landscapes offer breathtaking vistas at every turn, making it a paradise for outdoor enthusiasts and nature lovers. The famous lakes in Banff National Park, such as Lake Louise and Moraine Lake, are renowned for their mesmerizing turquoise blue color surrounding by soaring mountain peaks. This unique hue is called by the presence of glacier rock flower, which is fine particles of rock carried by glaciers and suspending into the water. The sunlight reflecting of these particles creates the striking blue tones that make the lakes so visually captivating. So here are some of my travel tips for hotels, transportation, food, and things to do in Banff. Hotels. We stayed inside Banff National Park at the Rundlestone Lodge for three nights, which was a great location because it's only eight minutes from Banff's downtown and only 25 minutes from Lake Louise. I highly recommend staying at any hotel in Banff National Park because it's more convenient than staying in Canmore or Calgary, especially if you wanna be able to get to the lakes and start exploring faster, since Banff is about an hour and a half drive from the airport to Calgary. So the closer you are inside the park, the better. This was a trip I didn't plan. It was my aunt's trip. So I just went with the flow for the hotels they booked. But if I had planned this trip, I would have booked these hotels. Number one, I would have booked the Moraine Lake Lodge because you get easy access to be at the most famous blue lake and you get to park there since no cars are actually allowed to park there outside of it due to there not being enough spots. But if you are a guest here, you can park there or the Lake Louise Inn so you can easily access that lake and you can take the shuttle from their hotel and the shuttle goes straight to Moraine Lake. So it's easy because you're already in the location to take the shuttle to the two famous lakes in Banff. And the last hotel I would recommend is the fancy five-star hotel, Fairmont Chateau Lake Louise. It's really popular and has a great view of Lake Louise. So again, you are in a great location from there and take the shuttle to Moraine Lake. And since we had a really early morning flight on Sunday, we stayed at an airport hotel on our last night called Wingate by Winham, Calgary, so we could easily get to the airport at 3.30 a.m. Transportation. I highly recommend getting a rental car for this particular trip. So you have control to go to every site you wanna see, every lake, all the things are spread out and not easy to get to. There are tours and shuttles you can book, but it is way more convenient for us to have a rental car since we would drive to glaciers, we drove to lakes that were one to three hours away from where we stayed in Banff. We would not have been able to see everything we wanted in our time frame if we didn't have a rental car. You will overspend on tours and Ubers if you don't have a rental car. So if you wanna see as much as possible, get a rental car. And here are the top six lakes to see in Banff National Park. When you enter Banff National Park, you do pay a set price to see everything inside it until the date and time you choose. So we got the discovery pass because you pay by vehicle, which costs us about $145.25 for three people. That's not bad. So the first lake, Lake Moraine. Lake Moraine is known for its awe-inspiring beauty, surrounded by majestic mountains, including the Valley of the Ten Peaks. The lake offers a mesmerizing and unforgettable view. The vivid turquoise blue water against the backdrop of rugged peaks creates a postcard perfect seating that is a feast for the eyes. It is truly the most beautiful lake I have ever seen in my entire life. We loved it so much that we went back twice on this one trip. You have to do a canoe ride here. A canoe allows you to experience the tranquility of the lake from the water and offers a unique perspective of the surroundings. It was one of the best canoe experiences of my entire life. It is expensive. It costs $140 for an hour, but it was a bucket list experience that was so worth it. And divided by the three of us, it was $46.66 a person. So it wasn't too bad. And we were so happy we did it. We love being able to be on the blue water to enjoy the lake with a different viewpoint. And you have 
have to do the rock pile hike. It's short and gets you the best, most famous views of Moraine Lake. And if you have time, do the walk around the entire lake. It's so nice to see all the different viewpoints the lake has to offer. And you'll run into some wild animals like deer, like we did. Very important info for getting to Moraine Lake. A lot of shuttle tours get booked up fast. And for Moraine, since private cars aren't allowed, you actually have to book a shuttle or tour to be able to see Moraine Lake, or you can hike 14 miles. We didn't wanna do that, so we booked a shuttle company recommended to us at the visitor center called Fairview Limousine that picks you up from Lake Louise Inn. I highly recommend using them. Cost was about $75 per person, but it was so worth it to be able to experience my absolute favorite lake and guarantee we got to go. We actually enjoyed the lake twice on our trip because we wanted to come back really early morning around 7 a.m. to also see what Moraine would look like as a mirror. So I do highly recommend when you go, go early so you can enjoy how it looks like a mirror with the reflection in the morning and stay till the afternoon when it gets incredibly blue with the beauty. Number two, Lake Louise. Lake Louise is widely celebrated for its extraordinary natural beauty. This lake is nestled in a valley surrounded by towering snow-capped mountains, including the iconic Victoria Glacier. The crystal blue turquoise waters of the lake fed by glacier melt create a mesmerizing and stunning sight that captivates visitors. It was more a light green when we went, but the weather and time you go depends on how the color of the water is because it does change. So definitely do the walk around the entire lake to see different viewpoints. It's a longer walk than the one around Lake Moraine, but just being able to see how the lake looks and changes colors at the different parts where you walk is so worth it. For Lake Louise, we only had to pay for parking because we paid for that Discovery Pass, which was about $22. Not too bad to enjoy this gorgeous lake. Another lake, Lake Peito. The best way to appreciate the beauty of Lake Peito is from the Overlook viewpoint. A short hike from the parking lot takes you to an elevated platform where you can marvel at the breathtaking panoramic views of the lake and the surrounding mountains. The combination of the vibrant turquoise water, the dramatic mountain peaks, and the lush green forest create a truly awe-inspiring scene. This was one of my favorite lakes for the unique teal and blue waters. You can't get as close to it as the other lakes, but even from the viewpoint, you can admire its gorgeous beauty. Bow Lake. Bow Lake is known for its picturesque beauty, featuring pristine turquoise waters surrounded by towering mountain peaks. The lake is fed by meltwater from the Bow Glacier, giving it a vibrant color that adds to its allure. When we went, it had this gorgeous blue and green color to it, and after Moraine Lake, this was actually my second favorite lake of all these six lakes, for the vibrant and magical colors in one and being able to be a lot closer to it. If you go to Hanging Glacier Cafe, you also get to enjoy different viewpoints of this gorgeous lake and literally are right next to it. If the water wasn't so cold, I would have put my feet in the water. Maybe I would have swam in there. Two Jack Lake. Two Jack Lake is known for its stunning natural beauty and serene ambiance. The lake offers breathtaking views of its surrounding mountains, including Mountain Ruddle and featuring crystal clear blue waters. Two Jack Lake is divided into two sections. Two Jack Main is a larger portion and it's the main park near the main parking and picnic area. And Two Jack Lake is a smaller, more secluded area located a short distance away. Both sections offer their own unique charm and opportunities for enjoyment. We saw this lake around 9 p.m. on our first night since our flights were delayed, and it was just so gorgeous like a mirror reflecting the scenic mountain in it. I couldn't believe how beautiful it was even this late at night. Lake Minnewaka. It's another beautiful lake, and it's actually the largest lake in Banff National Park. Stretching over 13 miles in length, it is nestled amidst the Canadian Rockies, providing breathtaking views of towering mountains, including Mount Inglismade and Mount Garode. The scenic beauty of the lakes and its surrounding landscape make it a popular destination for visitors. And three other adventurous things that I highly recommend doing if you have time. The Anthabasca Glacier. It's one of the six main toes of the Columbian ice fields, which is the largest ice field in the Canadian Rockies. It stretches over 3.7 miles in length and covers an area of about 2.3 square miles. 
The glacier formed during the Little Ice Age, a period of global cooling that occurred from about the 14th to 19th century. There is a lookout that you can enjoy the view of the glacier, but if you are a little daring, you can try to hike the glacier with a tour, which is recommended, or at your own risk, which is what we did, and it was so worth it to be on the glacier and take in the gorgeous views. But definitely be extremely careful if you do this because it's not advised to. But I wanted to be able to enjoy the glacier after traveling all that way, so I'm glad I did it. And do the Johnston Canyon hike. The highlight of the Johnston Canyon hike is the series of waterfalls and turquoise pools along the Johnston Creek. The lower falls is the first major waterfall you'll encounter, plunging into a deep pool, and continuing on, you'll reach the upper falls, a larger, more powerful waterfall. Both falls offer impressive photo opportunities and provide a refreshing mist during the summer months. The Johnston Canyon hike is suitable for various skill levels and can be tailored to your preferences. The Lower Falls hike is an easy paved trail that covers approximately 0.7 miles one way and is suitable for all ages and abilities. The Upper Falls hike continues from the Lower Falls and is a bit more challenging with a total round trip distance of 3.6 miles. The trail is well maintained and consists of raised boardwalks and bridges. I loved this hike. And last but not least, the Banff Gondola. It offers a scenic and comfortable ride to the top of Sulphur Mountain. The gondola cabins are fully enclosed, providing panoramic views of the surrounding mountains, valleys, and the town of Banff as you ascend into the mountain. Once you get to the top, definitely do the Sulphur Mountain Boardwalk hike. Once you are at the summit of Sulphur Mountain, you will be treated to breathtaking views of the Canadian Rockies and the Bow Valley. The expansive vista allow you to appreciate the natural beauty of the area with the towering peaks, dense forests, and winding rivers below to enjoy the gorgeous, most amazing mountain and lake views in Banff. Food. Definitely bring some of your own snacks if you plan to hike as much as we did. We hiked about six to seven miles a day, maybe more, doing 20,000 to 22,000 steps. So having snacks and water with us was really important. You need to make sure you stay hydrated when doing these hikes. Our first night that we arrived, we arrived so late due to our flight delays and we went exploring lakes um, since they close at 10. So since it doesn't get dark in Banff until 10 also, but everything in Banff closes early. We tried going to a few restaurants, but a lot of them do last seating at either 7.30 PM or 9 PM. So we just had to eat Subway since that's all that was open. So plan accordingly. We ate lunch at the restaurant in the Lake Louise Inn twice because their salads were just so good and it was easy to just eat before doing the Moraine Lake shuttle hike for our first time there. And when we did it the second time, it was easy to go right after we did Moraine Lake for the second time. Then when we were in Moraine Lake, we got some food and coffee from their cafe, but they only have so many options there too. So it's always good to bring your own snacks for these tours. When we went on our way to Lake Peito, we also made sure to buy food at the Hanging Glacier Cafe, as it's the only food spot to buy a sandwich or pastry before getting to Peito Lake and the Athabasca Glacier, which is almost an hour to hour and a half away. So make sure to grab something before heading there. After we hiked the Athabasca Glacier, we went to the food court inside the main building that's actually across from it. So it was nice to enjoy a yummy wild rice salad while enjoying the glacier view. And they have a lot of food options there. So you can choose what you want. And there's also a Starbucks here if you need a coffee. I would definitely recommend getting something before you make your drive back down. When we did the Sulphur Mountain Boardwalk hike with the gondola ride, we ate dinner at the Sky Bistro. This was my favorite meal of the entire trip. I love the shrimp salad that I got here. So I recommend going there. And our last night, since we were staying at the airport hotel, we just ate at the food court at the mall since there was something for all of us there. Thank you all for exploring the world one video at a time with me, your own personal bougie budgeter. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button and look for brand new episodes every Wednesday. And for all helpful info I mentioned or to book any of my travel services on Patreon, like buying this trip itinerary, read them in my description below.